guys, it's Mel Squawker, and today I am doing my book review for Stars Above by Marissa Meyer, and this is the 4.5 book within the Lunar Chronicles series. Um, I did finish the Lunar Chronicles series last year. If you want to go check out my several reviews that I get gave out, um, I will link those all the book reviews down below, along with the series wrap up that I will be filming fairly shortly after this, but most likely. But without further ado. Let's get into it. I also just ate a big ass bowl of spicy crab. Like just the crab with like the mayo and the sriracha sauce in it. And it was fairly good. So pretty proud of myself. But let's get into this. So basically Stars Above is a collection of short stories that Marissa Meyer has written over the course of the year. And it decided to come up in this very lovely book. And this is supposed to be the end of the Lunar Chronicle series now that Marissa Meyer is focused on Wires and Nerves, which is supposed to focus more about Eiko, and then we have Renegades, which is also out, and Heartless, because I don't know if whether or not if Heartless is going to become a series or not, or whether or not if it's just a standalone novel. I don't know. But, yeah. So, this is the last of the Lunar Chronicles series, and I'm kind of sad by it. Lunar Chronicles, like, the setting alone is probably one of my most favorite settings of all time. I really, It's probably, like, the first sci-fi-ish series I have read and I fairly enjoyed it and I loved my time with this and yeah so I listened to the majority of this on audiobook I did read the last like 50 or so pages because the um, library audiobook that I had was up twice and um, I had to read the last 50 pages on my own and basically this, um, it sums up a lot of the questions that the readers have been wanting to know for quite some time, like how did Chris get on a satellite? How did winter become so goddamn crazy? Um, and just like some of the aftermath in between here and there and yeah, so, okay, my points. Um, I mainly just want to talk about, um, Winter and Cress and the ending. Um, Cress, I think her story probably has to be my favorite one because um, we got to see her as a young child and she, like, Marissa Meyer does talk about how, um, basically we get to see her and how she came to the satellite and what she did. And you get to really, like, see her and, like, how she's, like, really tech savvy. Like, Marissa Meyer put, like, a big emphasis on it in, um, Cress when she was featured, but, um, they made a bigger, they made a bigger emphasis on it once, um, Stars Above was released, and I don't think all of the short stories were, like, published individually. I know I go. I know Iko's story was, I know that for a fact, a little android I think it's called, and um, I know a few others were, but I don't know if all of them were actually published all separately. So I don't think Cress's was, along with Winter, but yeah, I did really like Cress's story. I did like that. Winter, on the other hand, it gave me so many answers, and I was like, oh my god, this explains a lot, and... Um, yeah, so if you haven't watched my review for Winter, you would know, um, that I said that I thought that Winter was schizophrenic because she would see these hallucinations, and Marissa Meyer did clear that up in Stars Above, so I'm just gonna debunk it, my theory on it, because Marissa Meyer did throw in the little, like, illness thing that you would get if you don't use your glamour that often and I think she like she used it in a very creative way on not using your glamour so you like the person who doesn't use the glamour start seeing things instead I think it's like a nice reverse psychology in a way and I really wish that um we saw more of that and I wish winter would have started out like that like when she was first starting to see it versus when um what's it called when we first met her back in Crest, and yeah, so I really enjoyed that. For when, although Crest's story still is probably my favorite one, but yeah. And the last thing I want to talk about is the ending. I wasn't really satisfied with the ending of the book, let alone like the last note we get to see 
of the Lunar Chronicles ever, and that is freaking Scarlet marrying Wolf. And like, they mentioned it so many times in that little short story that like people were questioning Scarlet for marrying Wolf because of what he did and uh, what happened to him and stuff, and how he is like not human, but like. Eh. I don't like that. I mean, it's kind of like people saying that, like, back in the day that white people could not marry African Americans because they thought it was so wrong. I feel like that's kind of like the same thing in, like, this situation that they don't think it's right. They think that Scarlett could have found other, another person to love, which I do get because Wolf is, like, at this point, I think Wolf is, like, half hybrid of whatever he's supposed to be still. But, um, yeah, I wasn't quite satisfied with the ending. And I wish the ending could have ended on, like, a happier note. It did end on a happy note. It was a very sweet ending. It's just that I don't, I still don't like Scarlet. And... I loved her in winter because she also couldn't stand winter and I couldn't stand winter so we were kind of both on the same side. It's just that like, I think, I know winter is the youngest but I think Scarlet is the second youngest and I feel like she has like more growing up to do, like she has to mature a bit more. It's just that I think like with that situation, her marrying at, she's probably most likely the same age as me and I'm 19. Um. It's most likely that she probably still has some more maturing to do and her marrying at 19, that's a young ass age to get married, is 19. Whoa! And oh god, like if you're certain that you want to marry that young, that's a big yikes. And yeah, um, I think I rated, I think I rated this book a, a I gave this a 3.5 out of 5 stars. Um, like what I said before because we did get some backstory and stuff, but I just, like, didn't like that. I wish we saw more of Cinder and Kai because I feel like we didn't get that, like, like, enough of it. I fucking love Cinder and Kai. I think they're probably, like, the fucking power couple throughout this whole thing. And the fact that Marissa Meyer put, like, all this insta love, like, everyone in the book had to be in a real re uh, relationship, I feel like Cinder and Kai had to be, like, the definite relationship because it's supposed to be a, um, a Cinderella retelling. And we did get the Cinderella retelling in Cinder. It's just that I think that they should have been a definite couple. If I were to say myself which couple should not have been couples, obviously, um, well, I say this as, like, I can't. I can't say this. I don't know what I'm saying. But I'm saying that the definite couples that should be in it are most likely Sai, Sai, um, Kai and Cinder and Cress and Thorn because Cress and Thorn share the most amazing chemistry and I will get in more into that once I film the series wrap up which will most likely be after this. But oh my god. They are another one of my favorite couples of all time. And I don't think Jason and Winter should be a couple because at this, like, I think they should just be better off as friends. And I do think they don't, like, they aren't a couple that I don't, I don't think they are. I don't think they are. But I think they should just, like, stick together as friends because Winter is not using her glamour and it's causing her to, like, not act, act normal. And Jason is, he, Jason is very aware of that, that Winter is not herself. And, well, she is herself. It's just that she chooses not to use her glamour. Therefore, it causes her to act like that. I just think that they shouldn't be couples. And the same thing goes for Scarlet and Wolf. They should be a couple, but I just don't think that it's the greatest. So, mm, don't like it. But yeah, I did give this book a 3 out of 5 stars. And... Yeah, so be sure to like, subscribe, and comment down below what are your thoughts on our Lunar Chronicles. And honestly, they should make the Lunar Chronicles a fucking movie. Like, I'm literally ready to sell my soul for this to become a movie. And I think it will be great as a movie. And, oh, 
Um, also comment down below if you want me to do books that should be movies because I will literally rant about how these should be fucking movies. I'm ready. And yeah, so my name is Gillian. I make videos pretty frequently on this channel and I am power filming through this. I'm filming several book videos right now and most likely going to film my wrap up so you guys can see what I read over the past two months. And yeah, I'll see you guys next time.